bless you for advocacy and inclusion segment. I'm here with my guest, Beth Mount, a longtime friend of 20 years, and we're going to discuss the importance of person-centered planning moving forward with your life. And we're going to use me, unfortunately for all of you, as an example. So Beth, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you for being here today. No, oh, it's my pleasure, BJ. And you know, uh, we have such this long-standing friendship and it matters so much to me to be doing this together. So thank you for inviting me. Um, and so what you and I decided to do is to talk about what I'm gonna call the person-centered journey, okay? As opposed to the plan. Because yep. one of the things that we know has gone wrong in person-centered work is that people have gotten way too interested in the, the paperwork about it and they've lost sight of the journey, right? So yeah. as we explore, we're gonna explore important elements of a person-centered journey and um, we're going to go through, I'm gonna use this graphic to kind of keep us focused. We're gonna talk about four elements of the journey today and then you and I are gonna continue this conversation um, over the summer and add other elements, right? So, okay. Um, and then as I talk about an element, I'm going to ask you to share an example of a way that that element, that part, uh, is something that you've done in your life that it is an example of that, that you've already done, and then something that you're thinking about or that you might be uh, imagining uh, around that piece. Okay. okay. Got All it. Right. So, so it's not exactly a, it's sort of like a person-centered journey reflection rather than a person-centered plan. All right. Got, here, got it. And here you are in the middle of it, right? Because we are going to build on the examples of your life as a source of inspiration, which is a really important part of a person-centered journey. You don't do it alone. That's the last thing you do is, is do it alone. You yes. do it in concert with other people and you, uh, you, you build on inspiration from other people. And so one of the things that's really important about your life and your journey is that each thing that you learn for yourself, it puts you in a position to teach and inspire and lift up possibilities for other people, right? Yep. And that's also the power of the self-advocacy movement. That's why, um, your involvement in other people's engagement in self-advocacy is so important. Okay, so I'm going to, we're going to start with these first four elements today, and then we'll go in other directions over time. And I wanted to start by saying that the beginning of a person-centered journey is someone like yourself deciding that they want more in life, right? They're asking mm -hmm. what more is possible. And there's something about your life that you're just done with. You want to stop. You are fed up. You're tired. You're just, you just know inside yourself that you want more, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I wanted to um, uh, emphasize from the very beginning is the person-centered planning that I've practiced for the last 45 years, so that's a long time, it grew out of the civil rights movement in Georgia. And I want to say that to emphasize that it was never about Medicaid. <laughs> it was never about billable units and regulations yeah. and all that, right? It grew out of uh, a people's search for freedom and a sense that there were important elements to justice. And in those days, in the 1970s and the early 80s, the question was particularly around economic justice. So all the early person-centered plans always had as a part of them a question about employment, a question about increasing the resources people had access to through their own employment or through their own budgets, through their and through other ways that they have support, all right? So I just Absolutely. Want, to, I want to say that to emphasize that while we value all levels of choice making in this work, 
person-centered planning that I practiced was always kind of about these bigger choices. What kind of job do you want? How do you want to earn some money? Where do you want to live? How are you going to have more power, right? So in any civil rights um, journey, the issue of power is essential. So having more access to your own choice-making, self-determination, access to your own budgets, so forth, that was unheard of in the 1980s. And we've come a long way around that. We have a long way to go. Yes. This issue of dignity. So, you know, we're trying to go on a journey that not only embraces economic justice and shifts in power, but ways that people might belong uh, in their communities and make a difference. And by doing so, have dignity and have respect and not live on the margins of society, of their community to really belong and be members, right? Yeah. So that was a part of the initial impulse for person-centered work in the early 1980s. And one of the reasons that I have so value your role in the self-advocacy movement and over time is that you never lose sight of this bigger agenda, even though uh, it leads to you being a loud mouth at times. And I love that about you and a troublemaker, right? Thank you. Thank because Frederick, we have uh, voices, we have incredible voices of African-Americans uh, and they're louder than ever right now, thank goodness, because there's so much wisdom in those voices. We have Frederick Douglass guiding us saying, power concedes nothing without a demand. So let me say that again, power concedes nothing without a demand. And mm -hmm. so the person-centered journey that I know best it always has in it a demand, right? And ask for more. And yep. that usually makes people uncomfortable. So I'm just saying, uh, we, don't, um, we don't do this without expecting to ask for more and without expecting to ask for more from people in power. And um, the other reason I just wanted to start with that is to say that, um, Yes, you're gonna ask for more in yourself. So it's a personal journey. It's an individual journey. You have to decide, is this something I really want? Are these things I really want? And am I willing to take the next step? Am I willing to ask for more? But then other people have to support you. We're not putting it all on you, right? Yep. And um, so those are just some things I wanted to say to get to the very first element that I want to talk about, the first stage in any person-centered journey is finding your people. So you start with asking, who are the people that I feel like I can trust and that I can invite into this? And what, how might we think together about what more is possible? and how might they support me in my quest and how might I support them in thinking more about what matters to them. Mm -hmm. And so I want to hear you say a little bit about an example of you finding another person, inviting another person into your life to help you strengthen your sense of what's possible. I know there are uh, it, It's not actually a person, it's honestly a group of people. Right now, the Sammy's board that I'm on has really lifted me up and given me that hope to continue. Yep. Okay. And um, then there are other people in your life I know that are really important and have been um, every, everybody from your wife to your, to the minister at your church, right? Yep. 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 And so when you think about, um, when you think about what is the next step for you in asking people to be part of your movement, your desire to make a difference, who else is in that circle that you know you're stretching out and reaching out to now? Well, I, you know, I'm reaching out to all the people who are watching this. So all the people who are watching this 
and listening to my words or my advice matter to me. I want to let everybody know that. They're the reason why I continue and I always remember that. Okay, and you said something really important in that statement that they matter to you, right? So mm -hmm. this is a work from the heart, right? It's about yep. how much people matter to you and yep. how much their freedom and their and the possibilities that you know people sit with but are still unrealized yep. that you want to unleash. Yes, definitely. That's right. my mission and I will probably continue it long after my professional career is over. 